This week on TGC News, OSS has a new pistol silencer, Bergara has a new bolt gun, and Beretta buys one of the coolest gun companies in the world. And we're back in the home studio. kel continues to evolve and innovate with designs like the P-17, an ultra-affordable 17-round 22 pistol, or the CP-33, a 33-round 22 caliber pistol. How about the KS-7 bullpup shotgun? And of course, the RDB lineup continues to grow with the RDB Defender. kel keeps pushing the boundaries of what is possible. To learn more, go to kel Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Hopefully the audio sounds a little bit better in here. We're trying it. We got some snow going on outside. Couldn't make it over to the studio. It's a little dangerous to drive. So here we are. We've got a lot to cover this week, so let's jump right in. First up, OSS Suppressors has finally, finally released a pistol can. They've seemingly come a long way from the large and in-charge hexagonal cans of yore and have come forth with the new Rad 9 and Rad 45 pistols. The main key, of course, is the flow-through technology that put OSS on the map and the fact that the these are modular, meaning there are two configurations in one can. They say that the flow-through technology reduces gas blowback by directing gases away from the bore line, sort of out and then spiraling around, and eventually out the end of the can. However, watching the promo video doesn't really convince me of less blowback because it looks like there's still a healthy amount of gas all around during some of the shots that they used. That being said, there is no side-by-side -side comparison to show like quantifiable improvement. So as for now, that claim is just a claim. They also claim that it's quiet, but don't provide any actual data for that. So again, just a claim. They also say it's lightweight and they actually provide data for that. The nine mil in its short 5.15 inch configuration weighs 5.9 ounces and 9.1 ounces in the 7.7 .7 inch longer configuration. The 45 version in the short 6.4 inch config weighs 7.6 ounces and 10.3 ounces in the longer 8.6 inch configuration. Compare that to the rugged Obsidian, that's a popular can, which weighs in at about two to three ounces heavier across the board. The prices are $849 for the 9 mil and $999 for the 45 version. Overall, there's some big potential here. It's pretty cool to see interesting tech being applied to pistol cans, and at the same time, are the improvements noticeable or measurable? I suppose time will tell. I wanna know what you guys think of these though. Are you excited to see this flow through tech being put into pistol cans or do you not even care at all? Sound off in the comments below and let's talk about it. How about a couple new bolt action offerings? Next up this week, we have a new chassis from Sharps Bros. It's called the Heat Seeker and the key here is that it caters to a rifle that is really affordable. I'll go over the basics. The chassis weighs in at one pound, three ounces, and comes with a 10 ounce, 14 inch handguard with M-Lock slots all over. That's pretty standard. It's made from 6061 T6 aluminum. That's great and all, but like I said, the key is what it's made for. Sharps started off by making a version of this for the Howa 1500, but this particular version is made for the Ruger American. To me, that's awesome because you're starting to see more options for sort of entry level slash budget rifles. Depending on the setup, it's entirely possible that this could be a part of a setup that allows you to hit a thousand yards for under a thousand bucks. The price of the chassis comes in at just under 460 bucks. I've seen the Ruger American short action rifles go on sale for under 400 bucks sometimes. So that would leave a little bit of room for an optic. If you bumped your budget a little bit more, you'd be set up really nicely. Either way, the key here is seeing more affordable options for long range stuff. Also in bolt action news is a new one from Bergara called the BMR. The BMR stands for Bergara Micro Rimfire. And the basic premise is that it's a slightly more affordable yet still super accurate rimfire rifle, as opposed to the B14R rifle, which is more of a trainer for big boy rifles and has a fancy stock. This is a simple yet match ready variant. The basics are pretty straightforward. They come in 22 long rifle, 17 HMR, and 22 Magnum. The long rifle has an 18 inch barrel and the other two have 20 inch barrels. 
Speaking of barrels, they're offering a 4140 steel version and a carbon fiber wrapped version, both threaded for shushers, because why not? It's a rimfire gun, they need a can. They also have what Bergara calls a match chamber. On top of that, they have a 30 MOA Picatinny rail on top for optics, five and 10 round mags that it ships with, a nice looking stock, and a Remington 700 pattern trigger, which opens you up to a whole ton of aftermarket options. Pricing for the steel version is 565 MSRP and 659 for the carbon barrel version. Moving right along, we have some industry news to cover. Six Hour announced the final delivery of the Next Generation Squad Weapons, or NGSW, to the U.S. Army. For those of you that don't know, the whole system consists of the 6.8x51 hybrid ammo, the NGSW AR, which is a belt-fed light machine gun in that same 6.8 cartridge, and then the NGSWR and suppressors that go with them. The R is basically a beefed-up SIG MCX. Honestly, I'm just excited for that cartridge to make its way to the civilian market to see if it's any good. At the same time, SIG has some not so positive press happening with the P320. According to the CBC, a Canadian news outlet, a Canadian Special Forces soldier was injured from a misfire of the P320 last fall during a training exercise. That led the Canadian Special Forces to pulling the gun from service and going back to their old P226s. However, SIG responded and said that they believe this was a hit piece designed to knock them down right around the time of a government procurement for a new pistol. They also said that they got the gun and holster in question and were unable to replicate the issue. Then they added that the holster looked like it was modified. It was a 226 holster that was modified and that a foreign object could have entered and caused the discharge. Either way, it seems like SIG always had something going on. In other gun industry news, Federal has been awarded the contract to supply the DOJ and FBI with 556 NATO ammunition. The contract is listed as multiple award, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, and will run for five years starting in April of 2021. Another bit of industry news, it seems that the new owners of Remington, Roundhill Group, have acquired a new FFL and plan to reboot production in the Ilian New York plant by March 1st. That's pretty exciting news and maybe a ray of sunshine. Hopefully they don't screw it up. It's very possible that they will screw this up. And rounding out our industry news, Beretta Holding, the parent company of Beretta, Benelli, Franchi, Sacco, Tika, Steiner, and Burris, has announced another brand that they're adding to the list, the ultra prestigious Holland & Holland. For anyone that's not aware, Holland & Holland are British gun makers that have been around since the 1800s and make some of the most beautiful handmade guns in the world. These things are stunning. Beretta stated this acquisition further solidifies the Beretta Holding Group's uh, commitment to the key UK market in the post-Brexit era. Whatever the hell that means. I suppose time will tell what they end up doing with it. GunTuber of the Week continues this week. If you don't know, GunTuber of the Week is a segment where I share a gun-related channel that by our standards, which are admittedly really high, puts out high quality, entertaining, informative content on a regular basis. That being said, our gun tuber of the week this time is Roger Barrera. I believe that's how it's pronounced. He's actually the owner of a company called QVO Tactical out of Las Vegas, and I first saw him through Talon Size Channel. To be honest, the review type videos are really what sucked me in here. The vlog stuff, yeah, we've seen that, but the review type videos, the footage is clean, the presentation is fun and entertaining. It's just a good time to watch. Here's a clip. In today's video, we are taking a look at the new slide from Arc Division, the Arc Reactor. Oh. The Arc Reactor is a complete slide assembly with an integral compensated barrel made from 416 stainless steel. The Z320 Octane comes with an X carry frame, X series trigger, and the Octane Zev slide, which is compatible with the RMR footprint. Like I said, there's also vlogs and like behind the scenes type stuff, which is fun as well. So if you're into that type of content, and I'm pretty sure you guys will like it, 
Go find the link to his channel in the description of this video and get subscribed. And be sure to tell him TGC sent you. Vertex makes some of the best EDC bags and gear around. Whether you're looking for a backpack, a messenger bag, or maybe something for your pup. They've got features like a rapid access weapon compartment, padded backing, a hot pull tab for quick access to the main compartment, and much, much more. Oh, and did I mention their jeans make my legs look better? <laughs> Seriously, I can do so many high kicks in these. And guys, if you want to get a huge discount, head over to Vertex, that's V-E-R-T-X dot com, and use our code TGC to get a whopping 25% off everything. Go do it. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys from all over the interwebs. This time, our questions are coming from Instagram. If you aren't following us on Instagram, you should probably make that happen. We recently broke 100K, and we'd love to have you over there. Our first question is from Stuck Not Customs, and he says, what's one thing in 2021 in the gun industry that you want to see brought to life or happen? Honestly, I'd love, I would really love to see more positivity to balance out all of the frustration and anger that we're all generally feeling. It's tough, but I think we need it. Zach Anson says, what do you think of events like the tactical games? I think they're great. Anything that allows people to come together and compete and have fun is just a good thing, especially if it includes guns. Like, that's awesome. And this next one is gonna be a fun one from Low Level Flying. And they said, if time and money weren't an issue, what is your dream vacation? Going to Mars. If we're talking realistic stuff, I'd love to spend a month traveling around the world to incredible places, just straight up like picturesque, jaw dropping views in the mountains, along the sea, all over the place with my lovely fiance Genevieve by my side. That would be awesome and I would love to do that. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What company makes the best guns out there and who makes the worst guns? Sound off in the comments below. And if you wanna ask a friendly fire question, jump over to theguncollective.com and send it our way. After you click the like button, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link down in the description. That would be a massive help for us. Don't forget to use the coupon code. I believe there's one this week. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.